I've bought the right M2 Mac Mini. I'd like to start this video by thanking Toad L Guy. I hope I've got your name right there. But uh, Toad L Guy replied to my last video where I mentioned the fact that I bought the wrong M2 Mac Mini by suggesting that what I should be doing is getting the M2 Pro base model with 16 gigs of unified memory and the 512 gig SSD. So that's exactly what I did on Saturday. I went and bought that exact machine. The other one is going back as soon as it arrives. And this one, as you can see, is going into my music production studio, which is, well, it's gonna take shape over here fairly soon. But in the meantime, I thought I'd run this through some tests from a video editing perspective. Although I will be doing music production tests on this, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss those. There's only so many things I can judge this M2 Pro Mac Mini on, and because I'm a video editor, that's the obvious starting point. And what I really wanted to see was how this base model M2 Pro Mac Mini compares against my original M1 16 gig Mac Mini, but also my 3000 £700 M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro. Can this M2 Pro Mac Mini, which everyone is talking about at the minute, beat that incredibly expensive laptop? The results might surprise you. You probably know the specs already for this thing, but we'll run through them quickly just in case. So in the UK, the base model M2 Pro Mac Mini is £1,399, and it has the exact same design as the previous generation. Apple hasn't updated this for years. It remains to be seen whether or not that still has an issue with Bluetooth, and I'll be testing that over the next few weeks, as you'd guess. But in this one, we have an M2 Pro chip with a 10-core CPU, a 16-core GPU, a 16-core neural engine, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. There's also gigabit ethernet, four Thunderbolt 4 ports, and two USB-A ports. It's got a high impedance headphone jack, which is good news as well, and it also supports up to three external monitors. The only thing it doesn't include is a braided power cable, which is a bit annoying because we keep getting braided cables with certain other Apple products, and for whatever reason, Tim decided not to give us one with this. But regardless, all you care about is how quick this thing is, so let's get into it. My benchmark tests won't win any awards, but I've only had this thing for a couple of days, so it's the only way that I can give this a quick test to see how quick it is. And what I do is take a piece of 10 minute 4K footage from this camera, this Sony FX3, which is 10 bit color, 422. It's quite chunky footage basically, and you need a pretty decent computer to work with it. And I do two things, a render and an export. And to ensure this test is fair, I've used the same version of macOS, which is Ventura, the same version of Final Cut Pro, which is version 10.6.5. Basically all the Macs that you're about to see were plugged into power and no no other apps were running in the background. I started with the base model M2 MacBook Air, which is the closest thing I've got to the base model M2 Mac Mini, and in the render test, it took five minutes and 34 seconds, and the export took five minutes and four seconds. That's quite slow by my standards. It's understandable, that is the base model M2 MacBook Air. It's got the eight core GPU. It's not a particularly powerful machine. I also did this same test on the M1 Mac Mini that I built this business with. So that is the 16 gig version with a 512 gig SSD. I've edited about 80 videos for this channel before I got my MacBook Pro, which is over there, and it's just a fantastic machine. For this test, the 16 gigabyte M1 Mac Mini did the render in three minutes and nine seconds, and it took five minutes to do the export. That render time is two minutes quicker than the base model M2 MacBook Air. I suppose one thing to keep in mind with that is that the M1 Mac Mini does have a fan, so it has active cooling, which the M2 MacBook Air doesn't have, but even still, it just demonstrates how good that M1 Mac Mini is. Moving on to my main production machine, which is the M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. That has a spec'd up M1 Max chip with the 32 core GPU. It's got 32 gigabytes of unified memory, two terabyte SSD. It's basically the most powerful laptop I've, in fact, the most powerful computer I've ever owned. Let's get onto the test results. Basically the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max did the render in one minute and 31 seconds, which is blisteringly quick, and it did the export in two minutes and 37 seconds. Now, bearing in mind that that computer cost me more than 3,700 pounds, this shouldn't be surprising. I expect that kind of performance from that laptop. Okay, let's get onto the main event, the base model M2 Pro Mac Mini. The render 
took 1 minute 27 seconds. Yep, you heard that right, it's 4 seconds quicker than the £3,700 M1 Max MacBook Pro. The export took 4 minutes and 44 seconds, so quite a bit slower than the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and only just a bit quicker by about 15 seconds than the M1 Mac Mini. Let's try and work out what this all means. As mentioned earlier, I do need longer with this M2 Pro Mac Mini, but straight off the bat, if you are a video editor and you're not working religiously to the clock, so, you know, every single second doesn't count, then at £1,399, just given that render time alone, it's worth the investment. And yes, the export time isn't stunning, but it's still quick enough to get you out of trouble. Secondly, if you have absolutely no worries about time, so if you're just a hobbyist video editor and you're just trying things out and and, you know, there's no stress on the work that you do in that respect. Go and buy yourself a second-hand or a refurbished M1 Mac Mini with the 16 gigabytes. It's, just, it's still, even today, boggles the mind how good that computer is. If you're sitting on the other side of the fence and every single second counts, so the render time is really important and the export time is super important, then something like the M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro is the thing to get. The reason that's so much quicker in every regard, particularly with that export time, is because of the better video encoding engines inside. And once again, if you're in the market for one of those machines, I wouldn't look at the M2 Pro or M2 Max models. I'd get yourself a bargain and get yourself an M1 Pro or probably the M1 Max MacBook Pro. For non-video people it's very difficult to comment on this because I'm not a developer and although I do music production occasionally I'm not ready to test that yet. That's coming soon. Remember to subscribe of course not to miss that. But having said that guys, at £1,399 the sheer power that is available in this tiny little form factor. If you don't need a MacBook Pro, you know, you don't have any need for this thing to be portable, it's very hard to look past this now. In everyday use, this thing screams along like every single Apple Silicon Mac, that's not a problem at all. But just the fact that we now have this Apple Silicon Mac Mini that has all of that headroom in terms of GPU performance, CPU performance, and multi-core performance, is, well, it's, I'm gonna say it again, it is game-changing. There is just one issue with this computer, which is the Mac Studio. And if you've been specking up your M2 Pro Mac Mini, and you've noticed that the price is creeping into Mac Studio territory, I've made a video that I think will help you. Keep watching for a link to that video.